Okay, um, this is the um, week eight uh, reading one practice problems. And it says basically that light reflects, choose the best answer, uh, at the interface between two different materials, only from shiny metals, from shiny metals, or at the interface between two materials which have different velocities of light, um, or from many things in unpredictable ways. We're talking uh, essentially at this point about light. Um, and so light is a wave, just like you know the waves we've been talking about. Um, and so it has a certain speed. Um, the speed of light in a vacuum uh, is extremely high. And so what you know is that it's 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, uh, which means that basically in one billionth of a second that light travels about a foot. Um, this is sort of the equivalent. Um, you still have essentially the idea that V equals F lambda, you know, just like it always is for a wave. But of course, in a vacuum, the idea is that C is equal to F lambda. Um, and so, generally speaking, that because the speed of light is so large, that the wavelengths tend to be relatively small. And so, for lambda, for green light, is around 500 nanometers. Um, red light is approximately 700 uh, nanometers. Uh, blue light is around 450 nanometers or so. Um, and so the idea, but these are very small, small right? So in other words, your um, a hair from your head is around, you know, thir between 30 and 70 microns. Um, and so 500 nanometers is one half of a micron. So if you divided your hair into about 60 parts or, you know, around 100 parts, um, that would roughly give you the wavelength of light. Now, the other issue is that the speed of light um, of 3 times 10 to the 8th is only basically for vacuum. Um, or air, but in any other material, um, the speed of light is always going to be less than the speed of uh, light in the vacuum. And uh, in particular, what that means is, is that if you have a light ray which is uh, going between a vacuum or air, so you know you have a light which is propagating in this direction, um, and so you have air on one side and say something like glass on the other side. Um, out in the air, the speed of light is c, but in the glass, it's always going to be v, which is somewhat less than c. And of course, what that means, since v is equal to f lambda, is that uh, since the velocity is decreasing, that means the wavelength becomes smaller. Um, and so when it gets into the glass, it's going to have a shorter wavelength um, and the speed's going to be smaller. The thing that's, that actually is always the same is the frequency. And so in particular, just like when we, with a string, when you go between, say, a heavy string and a light string, if the speed of light is actually changing, then what happens is that if you have go between two different materials which have different speeds of light, then part of the light ray is, the light wave is reflected, and part of it is transmitted. So what you get from that, and what you require, though, is a difference in the materials where the speed of light is different. Of course, at the metal, uh, that's kind of an ex uh, extreme difference, but a metal's obviously, you know, are shiny, they always reflect light as well. So basically what you require is shiny metals or at the interface between two materials which have different velocities of light. Um, if you don't, if the materials, even though they're different, have the same velocity of light, then there's no reflection. Okay. Now, if you, what that means though is, is if you go between two different interfaces, then you're always going to have a reflected beam. And so when one usually describes it is that you define it according to the normal to the surface. So if I have a flat surface, then the perpendicular to the surface is that dashed line. 
And so if you come in with a ray of light, which is incident on the, um, at some angle at theta, and thetas are always measured relative to the normal, then what you know from your reading is essentially the reflected beam will be reflect exactly at the same angle. So theta reflected is equal to theta incident. Um, and if you're going between air and glass, typically what happens is the light ray actually bends so that the refracted beam is slightly less than the incident beam. The, in the reflected angle is actually slightly less than the incident angle. Um, and what determines this is what's called Snell's Law. Which basically means that um, if you go between two interfaces, n1 sine theta1 is equal to n2 sine theta2, where theta1 is the incident angle in media1, theta, uh, and theta2 is the, in, is the refracted angle uh, in media2. And so the idea is, is that if going between air and glass, air has a what's called the index of refraction, is essentially the speed of light divided by the speed of light, you know, in vacuum, divided by the speed of light in air. And so the index of refraction for any material is always going to be greater than or equal to 1. In air or vacuum, it is exactly equal to 1. In any other material, it's greater than 1. And so what that means is if we go from air to glass, since the index of refraction goes up, the uh, angle of refraction, since the index of, of um, refraction goes up, then the wavelength, then the um, angle of refraction, the refractive angle basically decreases, and so it bends towards the normal. Um, and then you still have the issues of uh, V equals F lambda, and so the idea is if the velocity goes down in the material, then the wavelength has to go down. The frequency always remains the same. So if I go down to here, when light moves from air into glass, essentially the, uh, the velocity decreases. Um, and so since the velocity of light decreases, the wavelength has to decrease. But the frequency always remains the same, uh, which is the answer here. OK. Now, what you get from that is that as long as you have a change in the index, then you always end up getting a reflected beam. And theta incident is equal to theta refracted, and so uh, theta reflected. The reflected angle is equal to the incident angle. Um, and so when you talk about this, you know, playing with laser beams, which are not a you know, great idea if you're being silly about it, um, essentially you always get part of the laser beam is reflected, part of it's transmitted, and the degree depends on the index. Uh, normally is this that if you're talking about normal glass, about 10 or 11 percent of the light is reflected and about 90 percent of the light is transmitted. So the laser beam, when it reflects off the window, basically the idea is that if the incident angle is 45 degrees, then the reflected angle is also 45 degrees. Um, and, but you're always going to have light transmitted into the room unless you have a, you know, a perfect metal which reflects perfectly. Um, and so the, uh, the idea is the laser beam totally reflects off the, it basically reflects off the window pane back towards the beach at 45 degrees angle, and some of the light is transmitted into the beam, into the room. So the laser beam partially reflects off the window pane and part of it gets reflected. Um, this is the uh, kind of a, simulation that you have uh, that you can do. And so if you have a laser beam that's incident on going between air and glass, then you get essentially a reflected beam. Let's see if I put this here at that angle. What you'll notice is that this is at about 45 de uh, degrees, and that means the reflected angle is about 45 degrees. So if I were to, this is 30, 40, 45, um, so if, it, if the incident angle is 45 degrees, then the reflected angle is 45 degrees. 
Um, and what you notice is that when it bends, it bends towards the normal. If I, and this is for water, if I make the index larger, then it bends more closely towards the normal for the refracted beam. So if I were, if, if the incident angle is 60 degrees, then the reflective angle is 60 degrees. Generally speaking, is is that the uh, reflected power, basically, uh, the larger the index contrast, the more uh, light that's reflected. And so if this has an index of about 1.6, then you end up getting about 20% reflected. If it's like with water, then you only get about 11%. For glass, which is about 1.5, it might be as much as 16%. And it does depend on the angle as well. Generally speaking, the more oblique the angle, so in other words, if it goes at grazing incidence, then you actually get more power that's reflected. So this is like 30%. If I decrease that angle, then the amount of power actually uh, can become pretty small. And then, correspondingly, more of the power gets transmitted. So we'll talk about this a bit more shortly.